Did you ever think you wanted a mashup of Upgrade and Jason Bourne? Well, now you have it with Dark Asset. Let's talk about it now. Hey everyone, it's David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm here to talk to you about Dark Asset, which comes to theaters on September 22nd, 2023. It is an indie spy thriller that feels kind of like a cross between like Upgrade and Jason Bourne. So my hot take is I think you should rent it. It was kind of between a watch and a rent. I liked it a lot more than I expected to. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. It was a very enjoyable kind of action spy thriller with a little bit of a technical aspect to it. So uh, I liked the cast, I liked the effects, I liked the overall kind of storytelling, and it was just kind of a fun overall movie. So the ultimate recommendation is a rental, but if you go see it, I think you'll still enjoy it. It has a lot to, it has a lot to like about it. So I'm going to tell you a little about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and then really quickly go into the ending. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the ending section. If you don't want to know what happens in this movie, I would turn it off when I get there. Before that, though, I'll keep it vague, I'll keep it spoiler-free, and I'll let you know when I get to those spoilers. So in Dark Asset, you have a super soldier in training, John. He has a like a, a chip that is implanted into his head that gives him essentially superpowers. It, like a pet, it speeds up his processing. It lets him kind of do things that most people can't. But it also increases his like physical prowess, his physical abilities. He just becomes like the ultimate super spy soldier. But during his training, he seems to go rogue. He seems to stop following the orders that he's given and start doing his own agenda. And you don't really know why. You don't really know what his ultimate plan is. But it becomes clear that this is going to affect both him, the whole program, and everyone around him. So, things I liked about this movie. The first, yeah, I liked the action. It had some decent action. It was kind of a mixed bag, but it had some pretty fun hand-to-hand -hand combat. The the weapons, the shooting wasn't that great, but the hand-to-hand -hand combat was enjoyable. It, you know, they did some good tricks with it to make it seem fast-paced, to make it seem kind of more complex. And so that, that combat was definitely fun to see. The second thing I liked, I liked the tech feel. Like it's definitely an indie movie, but it has a nice aesthetic to it. You get kind of like a lab feel in a lot of the rooms. You get kind of a high-tech um interface between John and the scientists that are studying him slash trying to kind of convert him into a super soldier. You get a lot of like techno, you know, sound effects and things like that. Look, it's an indie. It's not like the biggest, most elaborate special effects, but they did a lot with what they could. And they definitely give us a kind of high tech, nice polish to it. The third thing I like, look, I like the style. It has like a nice, clean aesthetic to it. A lot of it takes place in this lab, which has this kind of clean, modern feel to it. And then some of it takes place in the field and some of it takes place in this high-end hotel, which has these beautiful, bright splashes of color, this kind of like overall feeling that this feels like a higher budget movie than it actually was. I mean, I don't know what the budget was, but this definitely feels more polished, kind of more put together than most of the indie action movies I see. And a part of that was like just the style and the aesthetic of this film. Definitely made you feel like you were watching something that was, I don't know, higher class, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and part of that was the fourth thing I love. I love the Lamborghini. This movie has a Lamborghini in it, which you don't normally see again in an indie film. It, it, it is a fun piece that kind of keeps coming up during the film and is definitely kind of an eye pleaser. It definitely is a feast for the ears as well. And I loved every scene that it was in. And the last thing I like, I like Byron Mann, the kind of main character. I thought he had a really nice performance. He definitely kind of plays this super spy, this kind of like overconfident, cocky super spy really, really well. And a lot of this thing is in like a storytelling motif, like Byron Mann is telling the story of like what is happening with his agency and what he is doing. And that would actually be the sixth thing I like. I liked the way that they kind of told the story. I don't want to, you know, overload the screen, but I did like that. But I also loved Byron Mann's kind of storytelling. It definitely was enjoyable. It kind of kept your attention. I liked how you kind of kept going back to him. You get to see this overall demeanor and it keeps you engaged. It keeps you kind of like interested in what's going on. And it lets them give a lot of backstory in a very kind of natural way. So all that being said, things I didn't love as much. The first, there's a little bit of corny writing. Like it is serviceable, but there are some lines that just kind of feel off. Uh, there's some like... Uh, machismo lines that just felt weird there's some you know corny writing here and there it's not bad it kind of gets the job done but there were definitely some lines in there that i, I kind of cringed out a little bit the second thing i didn't love as much there is some repetitive action most of this is with the kind of shooting action there's one scene uh where like people are just taken out like over and over again like four at, like four in a row all doing the same thing like people like these people are running down the hall boom, they're shot. Next person runs down the hall, boom, they're shot. It just felt repetitive. It felt like they were trying to fill the time without coming up with a little bit more creative gunplay. Now, most of that is the gunplay. Like I said, the hand-to-hand -hand combat 
is enjoyable. So unfortunately, the gunplay just doesn't really do it for me. And thankfully, it's not a large part of the overall movie. And the last thing I did not love as much, it reuses some footage, not a ton, but there are definitely some scenes that were recycled, which isn't a bad thing. It just kind of always makes me cringe a little bit when that happens. I don't think they need to do that to fill time. This movie was plenty long. Like it, was, it was a good feeling amount of time. It was about an hour and 40 minutes. So I think they were just there to kind of remind the audience of what happened. But, but it was annoying to kind of see the same scenes play out again uh, with no changes. So all that being said, I liked this movie a lot more than I expected to. Uh, Dark Asset is coming to theaters on September 22nd, 2023. So my ultimate recommendation is to rent it. And if you see it in theaters or you do rent it after the fact, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. Let me know what I got right and wrong. I love hearing people's thoughts. I love hearing kind of critiques of, of my review. So uh, let me know. And uh, I'm going to go into the ending now. So if you don't want to know what happens in this movie, I would turn it off now because there will be spoilers. So... This movie kind of focuses on John Doe, who is this super agent, this super soldier that was recruited by this program to implant chips into people's brains and then give them essentially super abilities. They can uh, they can fight really well. They can do great problem solving. They become expert hackers and they do get uh, kind of some, you know, essentially super powers. Like one of the one of the challenges is they have to kind of guess what a card is and there is no way for them to actually know this but they are able to so they essentially become like super duper soldiers super duper spies and john doe is kind of the latest one he is the most upgraded chip but early on in the process he goes rogue he breaks out of the installation he kills a lot of the guards and he just kind of gets out of there and you don't really know why but the next thing you know John Doe is at this bar with this person named Jane, who is on a business trip at the bar, just kind of relaxing. And John offers her his Lamborghini, that Lamborghini I mentioned that I love, if he can tell her a story. And as he's telling her a story, you learn more about the program. You learn more about this like super spy program. He reveals a lot of information that he probably shouldn't. It feels like maybe there is some spillage going on here, but... He tells her about the program. He tells her about like the first agent. It is a nice kind of vehicle to tell the whole story of what's happening. And like I said, I liked the way that this developed. You know, he is telling the story to Jane. So you get, you know, both his narrative and then you get to see kind of how this program developed, the various agents that have gone through the program and the way that the ship has changed through these agents. Uh, and it always kind of comes back to John and Jane's conversation, which is kind of fun. It's a fun anchor point to then go off and tell these other stories about this program. Eventually, you find out that the main instigator of this program is this person named Dr. Kane, who's played by Robert Patrick. He is the one he is the mind behind this whole program. He has financiers who are helping him do this. But it seems like he just this is his brainchild. This is his baby. And he is going to see this through to the end now becomes clear that John doesn't want him to see this to the end because John thinks that he is just going to be used. He thinks that uh, he is either going to become a super soldier and be used until he's no longer valuable, or he's just going to be kind of experimented on and then kind of disposed of when he, again, no longer has value or when they learn more and kind of upgrade the chip into something else. But you also find out a few more things during the conversation. You find out that Jane may be a little bit more capable than she let on. During their conversation, John says that he's going after this senator, this Senator Benson, who is kind of the main thrust behind this, this microchip program. He is the one that is kind of helping to give Dr. Kane cover, uh, helping to kind of give it political backing. And we find out that not only is Dr. is Senator Benson in this hotel, but he is up in Jane's room. And Jane's like, what are you talking about? That's crazy. Like, I'm just here on a work trip. And John's like, no, you know, you're not. And we find out that Jane also seems to be one of these super spies. She was there to meet with Senator Benson. Uh, she is, I guess he calls her one of his crows, his like handpicked agents. But she also went rogue, just like John. And when she went to meet with Senator Benson, she killed him and the guard. After that, she changed into this red dress and went down to the bar to have a drink. She seems to not remember this. It seems like maybe the chip blocks out things in her memory. So she she did this whole thing, and now she's having this casual conversation with John. But as the conversation progresses, it seems to unlock a little bit more of Jane's knowledge. She kind of seems to reveal that she knows a little bit more than she is laying on. And so the cat and mouse game continues. Now, eventually, you find out that Jane is here to meet with this, this person, this uh, Agent Wiles. And John, at some point, says, like, Agent Wiles is not coming here. And she's like, how did you know How did you know her name? And John's like, because I met with her earlier. And you find out the full backstory of like what happened to John. Now, John was recruited 
for this program. Uh, a microchip was inserted in him, but it wasn't turned on to full blast. And right after that happened, he met this person, Agent Wiles, in a bar. Uh, she just randomly came up to him. They started talking about the microchip. And it turns out that she is trying to shut this whole program down. She is from the agency and she is worried about kind of where this program is going, what it's going to be used for. And so she just wants to shut this program down in kind of a discreet way. She doesn't want to do it like publicly. She wants to just kind of get it done. Now she has the access code to the like chip that's in John's head. And how did she get that? We find out that someone that was involved with one of the financiers sent Agent Wiles information about the chip program. So she got this information from someone who was like embedded in the program, who was then saved by a super agent. So it all came, it came full circle. But Agent Wiles got this information. She met with John. She gave him the access code. She basically gave him the ability to go in and access all the information about the program. So he was able to use his access code to change his own chip's access code so they can't disable his chip. They can't monitor him. He can kind of go off the grid. That's why he was able to uh, fight back when they were training him. That's why he was able to escape. And while he was there, before he fully escaped this facility and then went and got that Lambo I keep talking about, he sent messages to all the other agents. There's like four other agents, three or four other agents, and he sent them all messages. Now, you can't directly control the agents through the chip, but you can send them suggestions. You can give them very strong suggestions. So the suggestions he said was, hey, he sent each of them to take out one of the financiers to kind of get rid of the backing of this program. So that brings us all back to this encounter with Jane. Um, it seems like maybe he sent Jane the same message to take out the program, to take out one of the backers, and that backer is Senator Benson. So Jane has done that. So as they're talking, we find out that Agent Wiles then took this information after she gave John the ability to do what he wanted, after he kind of activated the agents to go take out the financiers. Agent Wiles then went and deactivated each of the spy agents, like basically turned off their chip, which then kills them. I guess it was merciful. I guess she just wanted to kind of like remove all the traces. So she did that to everyone, but John and Jane. Why are they the only ones left? Well, John says that the agent isn't touching Jane for some reason, and John changed his access code, so he can't be kind of deactivated for now. Now, eventually, you start to see some other members of the program at the bar. Now, John said that he couldn't be tracked, but you see the assistant to Dr. Kane there. She is the one that recruited John into the program initially. And you see the head scientist who has been furiously trying to re-get control of all the agents, re-get control of the system. Uh, he has not been successful, but maybe he is now because he is at this bar also. Now they bring the bill to John and Jane. And when Jane opens it up, there's a QR code on the bill. When that happens, she gets this like weird look in her face. Like maybe like something is being downloaded into her. And then it seems to change. And that's when the ambush happens. That's when Jane reveals maybe she knows more than she uh, let on. I think the QR code like sent her a new directive and she punches John. John says, uh-oh, which is the first time he's shown like uncertainty. Before that, he was super, super cocky, super sure of himself. And then a bunch of soldiers come in and kind of open fire. Now, John, being a super soldier still, gets behind the table, is able to take out the soldiers, is able to kind of like hold his own but he eventually gets shot by vivian dr kane's assistant and he while he's on the ground he manages to shoot the scientist the head scientist the person that was hacking trying to get access code so that at least is a setback for the program but unfortunately for john he then gets tased by jane who seems to kind of be fully back in the fold with the program now the next scene we see we see john on the lab uh back at the program back in the lab being analyzed and he is like not moving but he has brain activity and jane asks why they're keeping him alive and dr kane says dr kane says well his chip is still active and they can use the data from his chip to build an even better chip chip to like make the program even better and jane's like but all the financiers are dead like who's gonna back the program and just and and dr kane's like there's always someone that's gonna want to back this program so even though the program is like essentially re rebooted He's going to build it back up. He's already probably found some new uh, financiers to help him out. And it seems like he's just going to build the program back up. Now, this could have been where it ended, right? This this would be kind of a nice, like, I don't know, darker ending, like an ending where it's like, oh, all that effort, nothing happened. But that's not where it ends. So after Dr. Kane says that, he asks, you know, he says that he would love to hear what the final words of John Doe were. And that's 
And that's when Jane reveals that it was good luck. And then she pulls out a gun and shoots Vivian, the assistant. She puts the gun on Dr. Kane and she tells him that John gave her, her a suggestion. And Dr. Kane's like, I know, to kill Senator Benson. And Jane's like, no, to kill the program. And that program begins and ends with you. And then she shoots Dr. Kane. Now, that was a line that John mentioned earlier. It was something that he said, you know, that he was like, Dr. Kane was the heart of the program. It began and ended with him. So now Dr. Kane's dead. Theoretically, the program is dead. Maybe Jane can go on living her life. Maybe her chip will be deactivated. Who knows? But once that shot happens, the music comes on, the credits happen. And that is Dark Asset. Like I said, I enjoyed it a lot more than I expected to. It was a pretty fun kind of indie action spy movie. So I think you should rent it. But if you see it in theaters, you'll probably have a good time. And if you see it anyways, if you rent it or watch it in theaters, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. Let me know what I got right and wrong. I'd love to hear it. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Let me give you a suggestion. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.